Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, Tom, Tom. She'll have to sign it in. That's right. See, now even, oh, Tom, even Tom is ignoring me now. No, I can hear you now. Uh, can you resend that? I'm going to try this one more time. Can you resend it, please? Yep. Doris, you can't hold your phone down here. You got to hold it up here. That's why I don't want on this phone. <laughs> hey, Tom, can you hear me? I can hear you. Alderman Hanauer just texts me and says he can't get in, so you might want to re-email him the link as well I, yep, with I his password. You got the AirPods, Andrew? Uh, kind of. It's so uh, fancy. ProPods, the generic version. <laughs> My son has oh, that. Where'd you, where'd you get that, oh. man, dog? I think, uh, Walmart, I think. <laughs> Need them. Need them. Not local. Not local. Yes, sir. Okay. Pro -pods. Okay, Tom, okay. you got you to gotta put me in. Tom? Yep, I'm working on it. Okay, I'm sorry. That's all right. Very demanding. <laughs> I can I can see Dora. I can see you. I can see Dora. Yeah, I, I know, but I'm you. I'm trying to get in on my laptop and I think it's working now, but it says please wait, the meeting will host you in the meeting host will let you in soon. I'm in the Cindy Brady position. I Where see Ralph. Ralph. Doris, you left the meeting. I don't see Ralph. I'm here. Oh, I'm back in. Okay. So, Alderman Turner, it looks like you have two different, are you on one phone and your computer? Because we see your ceiling on one of them. Okay, okay, now I'm good. We can see the ceiling of your other one. Yeah, I think you can turn the phone off now. I'm getting ready. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm trying. But maybe you wanted two votes there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, what's going on? Uh, you muted yourself. Is a story of a lovely Cindy. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. That was hard. <clears throat> I don't see you. I see you. Yeah, we see you. Everyone needs to just sit down and stop getting snacks. Chair, <laughs> <laughs> we'll call the April 7th, 2020 meeting of the City Council to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, the United States of America, America and, to the Republic, and to the Republic public for which it stands, one nation, nation, nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible and with liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Uh, if clerk uh, is able to, if he'd call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderwoman Turner. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderwoman Conley. She's here. Alderman Donovan. Here. 
Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Langfelder. Here. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. This time I'd ask uh, Chief Riney to come up and he's gonna give a briefing on the status of all the efforts going on with the coronavirus incident command team. Good. Um, so the incident management team, as I indicated in my email yesterday, and I always try to remember that I'm updating the public as much as I'm updating you. Uh, the incident management team um, identified a few priorities this week, uh, mainly dealing with uh, food and uh, the message, just trying to get that message out, especially to our people who are still uh, not adhering uh, or not um, heeding the governor's uh, advice or order on staying at home, uh, still having parties, still not doing that social distancing thing. We worked with the parks. Uh, the parks have taken steps to uh, address those concerns. Uh, this, uh, this week we started working with the uh, county parks just to make sure that everybody was on the same page and they've uh, been very receptive. Uh, as far as uh, food, um, we've uh, really we're trying to look two or three weeks out just to see uh, if, if, we get, if we get a surge, if there's a run on um, our food supply for the Central Illinois Food Bank to make sure that they have enough uh, resources to uh, fulfill those needs. And, you know, when we look at our numbers compared to uh, other counties our size, uh, we're right in the middle. We're not, uh, you know, it's not a, for lack of a better word, it's not something that you're trying to win or certainly not lose, but, you know, you want to make sure that what we're doing is working. And uh, we're still hopeful that, you know, as I said two weeks ago, we're, we're in that, we're, we're beyond the, the uh, we're beyond a lot of those benchmarks uh, that were really high on our priority list. Now we're looking at the what's going to happen now that the weather is breaking um, and what's going to happen now that people are more free. It's, it's pretty easy to quarantine in your house when it's 22 degrees outside, but what's that look like when it's 72 degrees like it was today? So that is uh, this week. I don't know if you've heard any of the messages going out. Uh, many city leaders... Uh, uh, went and recorded a 20 to 30 second uh, sound bites, which are going out to the media, and sooner or later will be able to be shared, um, hopefully over social social media, and just those avenues, trying to get it onto, uh, especially our younger population, just trying to get it onto their phones, so um, that they get that message to to stay in, to stay away from each other, and to not, um, you know, it's it, again, it's not really about. Uh, a 20 year old getting it it's about who they're giving it to and that's the uh, that's the important thing and just ironically enough I still find myself even when I stop in a, um, to grab a soda at a gas station I still find myself getting a lot of questions and educating the public uh, in small groups on things <laughs> that I really feel like they should know by now and so that's what uh, that's concerning to me is just um, you know the the, the lack, that's, it's a very hard thing uh, to get that message out to people that aren't, um, aren't uh, either on those avenues to get the message or just not really believing what they're hearing. So that's been a little bit frustrating this week, just trying to work through that. But uh, I think uh, the, the doctors that have been on the uh, uh, morning shows, I think the city leaders, I think uh, just people that have been on the radio uh, have been giving a good, solid message. So, Lynette, I, any uh, questions? Yeah, I don't know if anybody, uh, anybody from the virtual group, <laughs> have any questions? Unfortunately, I can't see them. Yeah, we can't see your hands this week. So. Yeah, but if you'd want to speak up, uh, if there's any questions, or just uh, affirm no. I have a question, if you don't mind. Alderman Hanna. Um, Alan, I, are, we, are we getting enough tests 
to, to do down here in Sangamon County or do, do, are we still limited on the number of tests that we're allowed? You know, uh, Alderman, I, I, I've always, I think I said it a couple of weeks ago, is the, you know, we keep, we keep getting told that the tests are coming. I do know that they've relaxed some of their standards. Uh, I do know that they're no longer testing for flu A. I believe that to be factual. Uh, at least some clinics aren't testing for flu A. They're just going straight to the COVID test. Uh, we've heard a lot about this uh, Abbott test that's coming. Uh, that is, uh, it's a five to 15 minute test. Uh, and the governor spoke about it today, about uh, just the, the only way you're really gonna get your arms wrapped around this is when everybody can just get tested to see if they have it or not, and then they can make good decisions after that. And uh, so I think uh, the frustration at the local level at the, is the same at the state level. So my short answer is no. Uh, for our specific members, for Springfield firefighters, Springfield police officers, uh, first responders in the area on the ambulance companies, they have uh, opened up a test facility in Bloomington that we are, um, we're able to go through. Uh, you're still supposed to have symptoms uh, to go through that, and that's still not an immediate test. It's, uh, they're telling them four to seven days as they go through that process. So when you think you're waiting four to five days before you send them through in the first place, after the uh, potential exposure, four to five days later, they go through the test, and now you're still four to seven days uh, later, you're almost as good at this point if you just quarantine, if you were just home. So that's been a, uh, it's been a frustration uh, uh, for all of us, and so no, uh, the tests haven't come. Uh, I don't know that they're going to, and if they, if they do come, I don't know that they'll come to our area. I think well, probably the, reason, gonna... the reason why I ask is I, I saw the map based on zip codes, and that seems very odd to me that uh, the, it's just the, basically Ward 9, Ward uh, 10 doesn't seem, you know, maybe goes, goes down North Coran there um, to uh, maybe John's Ward, or I'm not sure whose, but um, I have a hard time believing that the rest of the, there's not a case in every ward of the city, but so, I, I guess that's a good thing. That means people are not, you know, are not spreading it. Yeah, I, I find it. I know Alderwoman Turner asked uh, uh, for a breakdown, uh, not just of Sagamon County, but of uh, Springfield. And I know the mayor and I've had a lot of conversations and I don't want to speak for him, but I know one of his frustrations has been just tracking in general for the people that you know likely have it, but maybe didn't receive a test, that maybe they were told by their physician to stay home, and those are uh, you know those are problems we're trying to work through. But they're almost it's almost impossible to know if somebody calls a tele nurse and the nurse says, "Yeah, you sound like you got it. Just stay home. Come in if you have symptoms. Come home if you have worse. Uh, come home if you have um, you know if you develop those symptoms that cough the 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 the." scratchy throat, the fever, uh, you know, I don't know that we'll ever know that answer. Uh, the one thing I've really been looking at closely, and I, I think I said it in the beginning, was just that those cases per 100,000. And I saw that zip code uh, reference that you're talking about, and I personally, I don't believe that for a second. There's no, there's no way every zip code in our community doesn't have at least somebody that's a high likelihood of, of that's home quarantine or home isolated on doctor's advice, just waiting for either to get better or for the symptoms to become worse. I find that hard to believe myself and that map was from the Illinois Department of Public Health and I yes. don't think it includes the private testing labs I, that yeah that's exactly right is one of the uh, public health's uh, and that's uh, something that we have worked with the hospitals a little bit the the private labs um, that are doing testing uh, well, really, Bloomington, the example I just gave, those are two private labs that they're sending those off to. Uh, they are reporting back, so that's, uh, that's good. But the, one, the, the other number we're having trouble tracking is the, is the people that were positive but are now well. They're now cured. They're, they're done with, the, with their, you know, their, um, they, they've gone through the process, they've gotten better, and they're no longer uh, spreading or capable of spreading the virus. Uh, that's a very difficult number to track, too, because it's not, uh, you know, while I do, well, I'm sorry, Sagamon County Department of Public Health, while they do follow up with people and they're very good with that, obviously as the number gets, uh, as it increases, that's gonna be more difficult, and, uh, but it's still, it's really incumbent upon the person to, to report that back and to have uh, that good fact 
factual information so that you can then drop them from the positive list. And Alderman Gregory, I think you have a question or comment? Uh, yes, <clears throat> yes, uh, Chief, could you talk to me a little bit on our process for our, um, our homeless population at, at our Salvation Army Community Center? Um, walk me through that a little bit. Sure. Uh, so uh, in the beginning, uh, it was uh, just made more uh, sense for social spacing and really for uh, the compliant uh, uh, residents of that uh, facility to, to give them a place where they could both quarantine and be socially spaced. So we right. followed the recommendation. And really, I think it's been, and I haven't talked to Erica for a little while, and I'll make sure that I do uh, to better answer your question. But we do track the numbers uh, daily, and I think, yes, Yesterday, they had one person leave uh, one of the two shelters. I honestly can't remember which one. But for the most part, the people that agreed to quarantine there, uh, they've stayed there. They have, uh, they've complied with it. And that's, uh, we're a little more than a week into that now when that kind of that, uh, that decision day was made where at first uh, they, they told them, hey, you have, to, you have to stay here. It's for your own safety. It's for the safety of uh, the public. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the first few days, there was a little bit of back and forth. And then uh, the Erica and uh, Captain Eddie basically said, no, this is it. Uh, on this date, uh, you're, you're, you're not locked in. But once you leave, you're not coming back. And uh, I know I think yesterday they had one leave, but they're both pretty much at the same capacity they've been at all week. So I so think that's good. good. Yep. Okay, thank you. I, I had stopped by there earlier and um, it's a fine group there. It looks like everything is going well there. So I appreciate your hard work I, on that. Uh, thank you. I agree with you. I was really pleased. I know there was one day uh, uh, when we uh, when we moved them over there that uh, I called dispatch because the fire, the fire watches were going to stop at the uh, winter warming center and just to advise them. And they sent an officer by and he thought that there was nobody in there. So it was, that was, that spoke volumes to me that, you know, they, uh, basically, uh, the place didn't, it, it, there was nothing, there was no activity, but in fact, there were 30 or 40 people in the room at that time. And when I say they're, they're locked in, just again, I, I realize <laughs> I'm, I'm updating the public there, you know, they are allowed to walk around the building, get some sun and do the things that all of us want to be able to enjoy. So it's not like uh, there's an armed guard at the door for Forcing them in the building, uh, but right. uh, they are ba they are compelled and they've been very cooperative so far, to my understanding. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And no, you haven't heard of any, you know, no, no temperatures. Or everybody's seeming health wise. I'm sure you would have mentioned that, but yeah, that's obviously something we're tracking very well or very closely. And no, we have not heard of any of that. Thank you, sir. So, any so, other questions or comments for Chief Riney? I did. This is Doris. Um, Alderman Turner. So, so I don't know if this is this is probably more a comment than a question. I, I'm, I'm, as we all have heard, the uh, virus is disproportionately affecting the African American community. That's you know we hear about it in Chicago, but it's it's everywhere, and I'm very concerned that in I'm concerned about the entire city. Don't anyone misunderstand me? But I know that recently we have seen a disproportionate amount of, of activity, uh, large gatherings, gun violence, those types of things that have been concentrated in awards two, three. I know there have been some things in five, there have been some things in six, and we, I, we just have to do something that's going to in some way impact this. I know that we, we I know that we have the Illinois Department of Public Health is out on they is on uh, putting information out. The governor does his press conference. Uh, it's it's on social media and it's live every day. We have all of these things out, but he, but everyone knows, or maybe everyone doesn't know, but messaging in order for it to be effective, it has to come from trusted messengers in that community that people are going to listen to and they're going to take heed and then they're going to start passing along that information. And quite frankly, we have been silent in that regard. That's, that's the one thing. I know I was so frustrated about it over the weekend. Um, I put together a, a family uh, PSA that I, that I put out. So the other thing is, is that um, we need to do something 
that's going to discourage people from yeah. gathering. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, you, you can't just, we, we just can't continue to allow people to gather without some type of, uh, of pushback. And, you know, I know that um, I had the police go out to several pickup basketball games, and then I, you know, contacted uh, the school district and park district. They finally took the rims down, but people are still getting together with street parties. It's getting warmer. There's going to be more of that. So, you know, we just have to do something. I don't know if it's ticketing people. I don't know if it's a, a curfew, but we, we just can't continue to be silent because people people are dying and and we we have not seen the worst of it everybody says that the next 2 weeks are going to be extremely critical and unfortunately the way that we're seeing this virus trend it is going to disproportionately affect those communities that are most vulnerable and and in the least position to protect themselves and we have to do that for them we have to protect those, we have to protect everyone, but most especially those communities that are most vulnerable. So, you know, I, again, it's not a question. I, I guess it's more of a comment and a concern that I have that not only I have, but I hear it all the time from people who contact me either through social media, calls, texts, whatever. The community is they're 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 in a in a in a position where they just feel like they're out they're on their own with regard to this and and they have no no help no assistance not, nothing's really happening to reinforce what we all know we should be doing you know we should be staying at home and if we have to go out practice social distancing and and that's just not what's happening right now yeah, with, I can speak to part of that, and then Chief Ronnie can speak to part, and then I think Chief Winslow's probably, uh, he's listening, but um, he'll probably send some messaging, because that's the challenge uh, from, um, I think he hit the nail on the head, what has to happen is with the peers, and uh, especially with young people, they listen to each other, so we asked the Mayor's Youth Council to put out messaging. I think the social media aspect is helpful, and it's uh, through Instagram, and um, uh, some of the, I'm not that tech savvy with young people, but uh, we asked the young individuals to put out their own messaging that uh, they could relate to. Uh, just like you have done, uh, I think it's important that uh, moving that direction. So it's just not incumbent to the elected officials, but your neighbors uh, and everybody else putting out the messaging, reinforcing it as much as possible through different means or different modes of uh, communication will be crucial. I think uh, right now, uh, everybody's looking at the supermarkets and you, we've said it and it's a matter of keeping reinforcing. You know, it's just like marketing. Uh, when you're looking at commercials, it takes six times to see the commercial to really sink in. It's no different in this instance. And with supermarkets now, they uh, you should just go with one individual. Previously, it was the family going or what have you. And uh, I applaud, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was Menards that uh, restricted individuals under 16 can't come in. And uh, you're supposed to go just for those essential services. And I think uh, people are finally getting the messaging with regards to that, but we have to keep pounding it because as I walked over, I said, what a beautiful day. I didn't even realize how nice it was outside because I haven't been outside. Uh, but it's important that we all reinforce it through the different methods that we can. But you're right, it's a community effort that would have to uh, transpire. And uh, I'm sure Chief Winslow will uh, send correspondence with regards to the police and uh, the challenges they face. Uh, the one thing I did recommend to him is that when the police get called to go out to break up a gathering, they should take someone from the healthcare profession because they're there to really try to protect the individuals. But when the people see police, they view them as enforcers. Well really what it should be is the public health or the medical person saying to the individuals that are gathering why it's important for you to take care of your own health. 
your family or whoever you're coming in contact with. That's why we're asking you to do your part, go home. But I think if the police go out there, break it up, I think they view it in a different aspect. So we are pursuing that with regards to having uh, some medical outreach people to partner with the police department as they go out there and uh, try to break up those gatherings and educate them because that's what it comes down to. How do we educate the public and, you know, with the pickup basketball games or what have you, uh, you know, it's all through the droplets and things of that nature. So you might think, oh, we're keeping our distance, playing horse or whatever. But if I pass the ball and it has my sweat on it, the other person catching it automatically got it if I had COVID. And so, but Chief, if you'd uh, want to respond from uh, Hold on your a second. Um, Mayor, I think that your youth, your youth council is a perfect, a perfect avenue to assist in this. So... But I mean, are you just relying on them individually to do it, or I mean, are you pulling them together so that you so that you know that this is happening, or that it's it's coming out in some kind of concerted way? I mean, I think it's it's good to be able to tell people, would you please do this? Can you please do this? But if you, but pulling them together and you know, kind of making it a group effort, I think would have more uh, have more punch to it. And, ha and have more of an effect to it, I think. The right. other thing about having a health a healthcare person go out, that's probably that's fine, and you know it is an opportunity for um, education. But I think that what 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 we have to do though is, as a city, we have to put something out that says we're not. You know, there is a. The governor has issued an executive order that you know there. It, stay home, no gatherings of more than 10 people, practicing social distancing. And if that doesn't happen, this is what will happen. I mean, right now, nobody cares because nobody has said anything to them other than the governor coming down. And you know, that's the governor, that's someone far away, doesn't really impact me, doesn't, doesn't affect me. I live in Springfield. So that's why I'm saying that we have to put something out that people can then that people can then latch on to. So then uh, a mother, you know, sometimes parents have a hard time making their kids do anything. Remember when you were a teenager, your mother couldn't make you, she could tell you not to do something, but you would find a way to do it. But if the mother says, okay, I'm telling you, you shouldn't go out, but if you do, you're gonna, the police are gonna give you a ticket for $50 and I'm not gonna pay it. You know, that it, there just has to be some kind of uh, carrot and a stick here. Uh, and just that's just one woman's opinion. I don't know. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> Chief Winslow's looking into that aspect with regards to the Mayor's Youth Council. They have met through Zoom collectively, and uh, Peggy Cormany's helping and Bonnie Drew coordinating that effort uh, because other schools are represented. So it is important to broaden that reach as much as possible. And then. If I can address the messaging, I don't. I don't want to get into the enforcement, but the messaging of it, uh, you know, that is that is exactly what we are trying to do. But Alderwoman, I can tell you, it's it's a global challenge. It's it's it is very very difficult to message people um, in in a way that every group receives. One thing I said in the in the meeting when we were talking about it the other day was, you know. If, if you're good at messaging, that's that's what advertisers try to do every day to get you to buy Nike or Gatorade or or whatever. And, and short of those of that of that global reach, it's very difficult. But one thing we did do is, and I suggested uh, Alder, Alderman Gregory and, and yourself, and then uh, Alderman Gregory sent me uh, probably five more names of people from the community, trusted members of the community that we can get those quick sound bites out just to remind people that, you know, this isn't about you, it's about who you're giving it to. And, uh, you know, if there's, I'm all ears, if there's something that, that I can do different to get that message out, uh, I'm certainly happy to do it. Because, you know, you can, you can shoot a video on an iPhone now, but you can't make people watch it unless you get it onto their iPhones. Right. But, um, and, and, and I applaud you for that. I know, I, I know that um, I was asked to submit some um, names of people that would be uh, good to uh, join in on that. And I don't know if any of them got contacted or not, but you know, I see, I mean, 
for Alder McGregory to do it, that's great. For me to do it, that's great. But I suggested people like people from the Sacred Heart Griffin basketball team, mm -hmm. people from the uh, 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 Chatham football team, people from the Lanphier High School basketball team. I mean, you know, people that young people know, respect, and can identify with. Those are the people that we need to have out with this message on their iPhones and, and um, sharing it. Um, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. No, I, I know you've been on this for a long time, and I'm not going to say anything else. I'm cool. gonna... no, and, and, I, and there's not anything you just said that I disagree with. As and do we even have it in our ordinances to where we can, uh, I, I guess the question is, is part of this emergency declaration, do we do we have the ability to find someone if they don't follow the, the what's in the declaration? Yeah, the Corporation Council can go over uh, one that we're going to issue tomorrow, but uh, if, I don't want to stymie the conversation. So we do have uh, Alderwoman Conley, Alderman Gregory, Alderman Donlin, and then Alderman Redpath, and then Alderwoman DeCenso. So Alderwoman Conley. Thank you, Mayor. I, I think I'm, not, um, I'm hearing from a lot of people that are very concerned about both the crowds that they're seeing at stores, um, that they're seeing walking in the streets, and then also they want to hear more from, from us from city leaders and, and specifically, I think they'd like to hear from you, you know, and, and have you put a, a video out too that, that's, that people can hear you saying this. Um, you know, we, you go to a store and, and, and I mean, I haven't for a while, but um, very few people are wearing masks. And, and we, I think we need to just show that this is something that, that should be done. We're all just playing our part right now. And, you know, um, so we'd like to hear some more of that. Also, I, I actually, I would say I disagree. I, th I think that if, if the police need to go and break things up, I hate putting them in harm's way mm -hmm. for something like a basketball game, but the people playing, people who are out and gathering are putting all the rest of us in more harm's way. So there's gotta be a compromise there. Yeah, that's a challenge that uh, Chief Winslow can speak in depth. I've uh, been on conversations with U.S. Conference of Mayors and uh, all the mayors throughout the city or the state of Illinois. That's the one challenge for any department. You look what's happened to New York, Michigan. Their, their uh, law enforcement's been, been decimated. And uh, then it becomes yeah. a public issue with regards to protection. So Chief Winslow's taking great strides with making sure that we protect our police force because if our police force is not protected, nobody's protected. And so uh, he's moving in a good fashion. I, I support him totally. He's really uh, taking a look at the issue. He understands the significance of it. And um, you know we will be forthcoming with uh, actions uh, more stringent this week. With regards to the mask, I'd ask Chief Riney to speak to that, if you would. And the mask uh, is more for individuals that are out so you don't infect others. It's not that you don't right. get it. It's more for you don't infect others. So uh, if you want so, to speak um, to that, Chief and I guess, um, Mayor, I, I just since um, Chief Winslow, I think, is here, I can see his picture. Um, do we have sanitizing wipes and, and hand sanitizer in all of our police cars and and Chief Rainey in our, in our fire trucks? So uh, I, can, I can speak to the fire department. We do an inventory uh, daily. We track our use. We track uh, how much we have. We were, uh, um, for lack of a better word, a, a little bit lucky. Usually normally, normally towards the end of the budget year is when we buy a lot of PPE. It's kind of the last thing that we usually pull the trigger on uh, going into the next budget season. So this, uh, from that aspect, couldn't have hit. At a, at a better time. Uh, but just for example, our gloves, uh, you know, we, we probably had nine months worth of gloves, but now you're wearing, you're wearing them more often, you're decontaminating the apparatus with them, you're decontaminating the workplace. Normally on, uh, normally our station cleaning, the deep cleaning was done every Saturday, that's being done every day. So that does uh, cause a drain on our PPE. It is starting to trickle in. Uh, we've not run out of anything yet. 
except for small gloves. I believe that was the only thing we ran out of, but we don't have many that use small gloves. Um, but our gowns are the biggest concern, and I was on the uh, phone with a vendor today, for example, uh, asking him about gowns, and he said, yeah, I just uh, filled an order for a hospital for 200,000 gowns. So that's the kind of, that's, that's what we're competing with. And I'll be honest, their, their need probably is uh, more than ours as far as, the, as far as that goes. We do, have, uh, we do have backups. When we run out of gowns, we can go to more expensive, uh, light hazmat suits, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word. Uh, they can be deconned, but that can only happen so many times. And it's not the price of them, it's just that then once you run out of those, uh, what do you have? And we've, we've really wanted to save our, our, uh, the, those suits for if, if and when this gets more, um, uh, more severe if the numbers go up. So PP um, uh, is a concern. We're working through it. We're, it's trickling down. It's just not coming as fast as I would like. And, uh, but, but we track it daily, and uh, we're on the phones a lot. Yeah, I think Gregory. everyone's having that problem. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's, I, I've said this publicly many times, the, the fire chief in Sheboygan has the same concern that I do here, and I, I've read the uh, fire chief in Champaign's tweets, and he's, uh, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty uh, uh, critical of the lack of PPE for first responders, as he should be. Yeah. Alderman Gregory? Uh, yes, I, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I, I definitely agree with Auto Woman Turner on, on, you know, and and I think overall, Good Mayor, uh, what we're saying as as a council is that we, you know, I, I think the message needs to get out there that, you know, some we we oops, sorry, we uh, as a city, you know, definitely are serious about, uh, you know, the things that our state has put down as far as isolation to, to you know, uh, slow this down. So I, I just have a couple questions, and I, I know Mr. Zirkle may have to answer these, but what can we do to um, possibly, I, I had some conversation with all the women with the Sims on this, on, on what can we do to possibly slow down um, and, and get some of our other smaller convenience stores to sort of model some of our big ones um, where they have lines outside. I don't know what legal standing we have on that, but I think that would be something to push um, on some of our smaller stores. I would think that if they have a drive through then um, maybe they could use that and, and, and not have inside. Um, it's hard to control those, those uh, small things there. Um, basketball games are certainly going to be, be hard because they can get in backyards and things like that. We'll have our our officers running around all time, all day. But I think if we can slow down trips to the stores, I don't want to go stand in the line all day. So when I get in there, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to get everything I, I, I can get so I don't have to come back knowing that there's a line there. Um, I think that's helped Walmart out a little bit with, with um, slowing down just, just random trips or, 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 or trips to Walmart just to get out. Um, so that's one of them um, that I definitely wanted to see if if we can do something like that. And um, you know, we, we you know, I just be honest with you, we did talk uh, about curfew and you know things like that nature. We threw it around a little bit just just to see uh, what we do, you know, what, what we what we can do um, because we want to definitely take steps to uh, you know to, to to make sure we keep our community safe. And you know, we we need to you know put all options on the table and discuss them. Yeah, I'll let uh, Chief Riney, uh, he wanted to speak to the curfew, but uh, yep. Corporation Council will uh, speak to the executive order uh, with regards to that. Again, that probably will be issued tomorrow, and then uh, I'm going to add something else with right. regards to the testing. And, and, you know, the only thing I can say about a curfew, I get this question a lot uh, just when I'm out or, you know, working. Um, I'm not sure what that solves. So we've basically had an order to stay at home and people aren't staying at home, I don't know that the bigger issue are people being out after a certain time of night. Now, again, I'm not trying to get in the police department's lane. Obviously, if there's other issues, civil unrest, things like that, I, I think that's when curfews, but to, but to solve this, the spread of this virus, I don't know that, I'm more worried about people that are out and about at 5 p.m. that shouldn't be than I am about somebody out at 5 a.m. And uh, Chief Winslow wanted to weigh in, so you'd uh, go ahead and speak, Chief. Good evening. Uh, first Good and evening. foremost, to talk a little bit about this, is that uh, the order that the governor put out is a executive order, a public health order, is not a criminal offense. 
So basically, we have a process that outlined that revolves around compliance and education. And as a last resort, uh, someone will be issued a notice to appear or notice to arrest you to appear in court. We've been dealing with the state's attorney's office and our legal advisor on this since day one. And to be frank, the orders were just way too, too liberal, to be, fair, to be honest. Um, people have called, they've interjected things that aren't in the order. For example, a basketball game is not a violation of the order if it's on their own private property, on their driveway, et cetera. If they want to have a basketball game with less than 10 people, they can do it. It may not be the wisest choice, but they're allowed to do that. We have been going to those kind of calls, educating people, trying to get compliance. Uh, and uh, most of the time, we've been very, very successful at it. But again, you know, there's a lot of things people are interjecting into the order that are not a violation. Uh, one is barbecues on it. Barbecues on a driveway, neighborhood barbecues. Uh, they can have a neighborhood barbecue as long as there's less than 10 people there. May not be the wisest idea, but they're allowed to do those type of things. And these are the type of calls that we're getting sent to. Uh, some are violations, some are not. Uh, with that said, again, you know, we are trying to do our best to gain compliance and education. Uh, but if they don't comply, then what they do is they get a uh, notice to appear in court uh, for a violation of obstructing a police officer. That's kind of where we're at right now with that, because frankly, the executive order uh, leaves limited options for law enforcement to take enforcement activities. And again, we've been this through the state's attorney's office. He's on board to understand what the process is, and we're willing to take those enforcement steps. But again, we, we uh, go based on a complaint-driven process. Uh, or if we see something uh, uh, while we're driving on patrol, we will address it. But typically, it's a complaint-driven process. So that's kind of where we're at with that. And we have responded to several. Uh, the issue has to be that um, people have to take it seriously. They Most of the people are aware of it. Uh, it just comes down to they just don't think it's going to get to them. So that's kind of what we are up against. Um, you know, you think that calls for service would be dropping during this time, and Frank, it's not. Our call for service were up slightly, I believe, for the month of March. Um, and those are kind of things we're dealing with, the nice weather, et cetera. People are out of school, so they're just out and about. Parents need to get involved in this. They need to take control of their kids. They need to make sure that they are trying to uh, hold them to a standard of stay at home. But even as parents and adults, there's a lot of things. that There's nothing that says I can't just go drive around in my car all day even though there's a stay at home order in place. I can perfectly drive around all I want. I can go to the parks and I can walk, I can do whatever I want to do. And the vast majority of our complaints have been driven around the park, but we have shared that information with the park police as well as referred them to the park board. So we're doing our part there. Um, I do have a correspondence I'll send you folks later on today or tomorrow and uh, you guys can review it, but some of the options we have out there, but that's kind of what we're dealing with right now. Alderman Donlin, thanks for waiting. Thank you, Mayor. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple of things to follow up on Alder Woman Turner's comments. Uh, you know, really what I heard was a request for consistent messaging. And we have obviously a communications director I think does a good job. Uh, we've had problems in the past, such as uh, we've had a lot of, and throughout the city, uh, when things were, quote, normal, where we had a lot of cars and, and uh, garages being broken into, and, and Julia and the police department put together a nice one-page flyer that was circulated throughout the community and neighborhood associations. We have that network that you utilize on a weekly basis. Uh, if something could be put together, uh, you know, like a one-page document that outlines some of these things, and maybe it's multiple documents that could be shared, but, Mayor, you have... 12 other elected officials on this call that I'm sure would be willing to, if, if we could have a consistent message, to help put that message out. We'd lo all love to be involved. We get asked all the time. Uh, you know, I, I tell you what, my family, we were trying to, uh, we ran into a little bit of a snag, but we're trying to make masks, trying to help the community and, and, and trying to find some way to be positive. And, and uh, we think we got that issue resolved, by the way. But one of the things that I just heard is, uh, I heard the chief say, and I understand his perspective, but uh, bat, uh, basketball or sporting, sporting uh, games with less than 10 people are permitted. That doesn't need to be our message. Our message is obviously not to do those things. And, uh, you know, so, Mayor, we want to we want to be involved. We want to help. We, we could, Julia, we're reaching out to you. If you could help us put together that message, that would be wonderful. And uh, really, uh, I think what I heard, again, what I heard Alderwoman Turner saying is, we need a consistent message. 
we need we need some, uh, uh, and we're we're all willing to pitch in and help and provide that leadership. I appreciate that, and I think Chief Ronnie can uh, speak to that because that's what we've been reinforcing is to stay at home, the uh, uh, cleanliness, it's, uh, and things of that nature. But if you'd want to speak to the uh, logistics of that. Yeah, I, I, the, the message in particular, uh, that, that, was, that was the focus of the end of our week and the start of this week. And my vision is exactly what you just said, of those 30-second videos that right. we can text to you and you can tweet out, you can put on your... If I, I get it. And I get you got a lot, of, a lot of things going on, but right outside that window there, I know I was turned, I was told to turn my computer, you can't see it. We had kids in my own neighborhood, uh, the multiple houses that were out walking together, uh, were doing things together, and our neighborhood association uh, took it upon themselves and put out, a, put out a memo to the entire neighborhood basically saying, listen, governor's order recommends this and this, this and that, and uh, it, stopped, it stopped overnight. We haven't seen it since. So uh, not only I think not only do I think it's important that we have it coming from those who live this and, and deal with these things on a daily basis, such as yourself, but people in the community, and that includes us on, on this call. We, I mean, I think we have a network. And I mean, we collectively as a council have a network that I think is pretty strong in this community, and I think we could do more, but we need some help. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can. Uh, I see no reason why we can't assist you with that both through the city and through the incident management team. And kudos to Alderwoman Turner. I thought that was wonderful to put together. And the one thing, if uh, people haven't done so, they need to go to springfield.il.us with regards to the information. And actually, I know um, it's easy to you know sit back and critique. We appreciate it because uh, there's always room for improvement. And I think I'd like to know the percentage of people that are complying. I think it's a high number oh. of individuals that are complying. So we do have some outliers, and I think it's important to address them. But the one important fact that we have, or important tool that we've been utilizing, that goes to your point, Alderman Donlin, about neighborhoods, is our neighborhood newsletter. Every week, communication director <laughs> sends out constant messaging, reinforcing the messaging. So I know some of the aldermen have taken information off that and posted it, which we really appreciate it, mm -hmm. and boosted it out to your boosted out to your uh, uh, your network, and that's what it's all about. How do we keep reinforcing the messaging? So I think uh, you know it's a combination, but we'll uh, come up with new ways of uh, improving uh, information and new ways to look at it because some of the other information might get stale after a while. So we will uh, continue to do that and appreciate your insights on that. They, they, they want to see you, Mayor. They want to see you get cradled, get out there with little bitty white legs and run around in that backyard. Yeah, that's right. And all the stuff like that. Sometimes they want to see me. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. Just I got depends. a thousand family members. All y'all do, do mm -hmm. something, man. So it's just about being cradled. We got to get out here and connect with our people. So we'll, we'll Alderman Redpath. Uh, in, in reference to the shootings that have been going on, I, I want to congratulate the chief, uh, chief Winslow and his team because they are cracking those people down. Mm -hmm. um, they're putting right. people in jail, and they're cleaning it up. And, and I guarantee you, they're all over it. And uh, Chief Winslow, that's a you guys are doing a good job. Keep that up. Um, you know, uh, the thing is, I go every morning to my farm to uh, work, and I stop and get buy, have to buy materials at Menards, and I seen where they did. Do they do the? Um, they're keeping children out of there because they were running through the store and that kind of thing. So that's a big, big help for everybody. But one thing I I have observed at, when I go into the building materials places is uh, ninety percent of the people, maybe ninety five percent of the people, are wearing masks, and it's a big deal. I, I carry a mask in my car with me when I go to stores, and uh, and I wear it. And the thing, I, I know Alderman McMiniman wore his tonight. I left mine in the car, sorry. But, but the bottom line is, is that people are complying. They really are. Um, I observe people out in the parks, and I watch them, and they are using social distancing and, and as best they can. I know some families that are they're just staying away from other families. I know my, my, my children and their, my grandchildren go for walks, but they don't interact with people when they're in the park. So I, I know that's working. So, you know, we all just... We, we got, it's, it's going to be a long time before we, this changes, and it probably will never change. We're, we're, our lives are going to change forever. So I think it's important for 
us and, and as Alderman Turner said, it was uh, great comments and we all need to reach out to our, our constituencies and, and try to get them to comply. I put a letter out in my ward and uh, I mean a, a social message out in my ward and for people asking them to please comply and to try to stay safe. So every one of us got to do what we have to do to make, to make this work. If we do, this thing will go away. Hopefully we'll find a vaccine and, it will, and we won't have to deal with this in a, in a little while, hopefully. So sooner than later, I hope. Yeah. The only thing that, you know, the one thing that I caution people is there's not going to ever be a date that we get to circle on the calendar to say this is when it ends and the next day everything will be normal. And that right. worries me as much as anything. It does. And everybody wants to get back to normal, but it's not going to be soon. And we're hopefully we can graduate back to moving back to normal somehow, but it's going to be a long time before we find a vaccine for this thing. Alderman DeCenso. Thanks for waiting. Absolutely. Um, you know, we had a lot going on in Ward 6 this past weekend and the week before. And, you know, I think hearing Alderman Redpath speak, it's a different experience over in Ward 6. I went to Walgreens for the first time since the lockdown, and um, I was the only one in there with a mask. No one social distancing. Um, you can go by Washington Park any day of the week. But it's, I mean, I'm, I, I'm afraid to drive by there right now. It's so packed. It's like a mob scene over there. So, um, you know, and this, again, I, I have to echo the, yeah, you know, the basketball games aren't in the executive order, but we have the discretion to do that. And barbecues aren't in the executive order. We have the discretion to do that. Um, you know, there are things that we need to do because people are not protecting themselves. And that is our job. I don't want to be, I don't want to be the police and I don't want to make more work for the police. Um, but if anyone says they don't know there's a stay at home order by now, you know, we're into what, week three here? It's just not true. So I think we need to get real and I think we need to take some, um, a harder stance on some things. And it's very frustrating. I don't want to bother the police with basketball games and barbecues and house parties, but I get, I get these calls every night and I always say to them, call it in. Well, I don't want to call on my neighbor. I said, I can't see it. So I'm not calling on it. Um, I did hear the gunshot on eighth street the other night when there were, you know, 40 people in the, in the middle of the street fighting. Um, so, you know, we, we've got a, a lot going on in the city. We have a lot of bored people. I'm one of them. Um, you know, we we have to we have to take a, a stronger stance, or this is just going to get worse. I mean, we have no idea how long this is going to last. And if this is just the beginning, and you know, weather's getting nicer now. Weather's great now. Um, I did see snow in the forecast next week, though. So it's actually what? kind of exciting. Yeah. That's um, yeah. So. You know, it's just, for me, it's, it, I'm afraid for people. I'm afraid for people's kids. I'm afraid for, you know, people that just aren't taking it seriously. A neighbor of mine said, hey, I'm going to put my fire pit in the middle of the street and we'll have a block party. And I said, no, I can't sign on to that. You know, I, what, who's to say people aren't going to come up and talk to me and talk to you and talk, you know, she, I understand people want to do things. They are, you know, they're craving the contact, but. Uh, at this point, I think we're, we are being irresponsible. And I put up these ridiculous little memes of myself on Facebook and, you know, say what I'm thinking or say what I'm seeing. I see Alderman Gregory laughing at me. Um, but, you know, it gets people's attention. Ralph has too. It gets people's attention and, you know, they comment on it and they're like, yeah, that's happening. That's happening in my ward too. Or that I heard that too. Or I just feel like we, we need to do more. I think you hit on a very important point is some people don't get it. And the reason they don't get it is um, the numbers. And I've talked to Chief Riney because I'm pretty frustrated because we know people go to social media and individuals are saying, I know I have it, I can't get tested. While others are being tested that don't have the symptoms like I do. Correct. And so what needs to be communicated is the undiagnosed individuals at home that have been quarantined or being treated. 
because it does two things. One, it shows the spread and how actually it is spread through our community. I think it's a lot more than 33 cases or 50 or whatever it's at now. I think it's in the hundreds. And so, but we don't have that quantifiable number. And the only way to get that is to go back to public health, um, you know, and find out when the calls come in, track those calls. How many calls are you getting? How many people are you calling in a day that you're saying stay at home, uh, make sure you're looking at your symptoms, what are their symptoms, and quantify it. I think uh, that's an important number to know. The other important number to know is to, uh, for people to understand that some cases, or most cases, my understanding, and the medical professionals have to weigh in on this, uh, is it can be treated at home. And what is that? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's those are two important numbers that aren't being shared. And the other one I will uh, uh, communicate is with regards to most people think, oh, well, the hospitals will serve the county. It's just the county of, um, of Sangamon County. No, it's not. It's really a broader service area of the uh, hospitals because we have a medical hub. We have that gem. So we have individuals that will be coming in, you know, from uh, Taylorville, they're coming in. Uh, Logan County had uh, some cases, Jacksonville, Morgan County. So it's a, uh, it's a regional uh, approach with regards to public health. And so those are some of the areas that really, the messaging, I think it's getting out there. I think we can you know, take a new approach to it. I think you have to freshen it up. But what's very important, share those numbers. Because once those start escalating, and they're going to escalate, I think they've escalated already with people staying at home and being uh, provided to at home. And we need to quantify that number because that shows you how spread it is already. But it's going to spread in the next couple of weeks to what level, we don't know. But I think people just look at two things. They say, how many cases do we have? How many deaths? And that's sad. But in reality, what we should be looking at is how many actual individuals have been calling in, thinking they have the symptoms. Uh, we've had testing sites set up, and I know they have the 600 cases or whatever, and 500 of them are uh, uh, not COVID-related, but there's a lot of people been at home being treated, and that's the number we need to quantify. And, uh, but that's, you know, that's a public health issue with regards to that. I don't know if Chief Riney wants to weigh in on that or not, but That's I think that goes to the point which you're raising, Alderwoman DeCenso, is um, I think, or someone mentioned the carrot and the stick. One is the fear factor. The fear factor is the driving mechanism to keep people in, in their house. I mean, that's really the one that will do it. And I think uh, some individuals that are out there, like you're explaining, uh, don't have that as of yet. And that's why it's important for the medical professionals to explain the health aspect uh, to individuals, what harm, maybe not to themselves, but to their family, to the, you know, the individuals that are, um, you know, have ailments to themselves at different ages that it could, uh, you know, impact mortally, which nobody wants to see. So I think it's the education aspect and it's a, it's a challenging issue, but we'll continue to move in that direction. You know, Mayor, you hit it on the head. It's some people are going to comply and some people aren't, like Alderman DeCenso said. It, there's just people that just aren't going to do it. And unfortunately, those are the people we have to crack down on and we need to find them. Mm -hmm. We really do. Because the people that are, that are following the rules are going to be subjected to those people pretty soon. And uh, so we got we got to get firm. we got to get tough. Well, that's a good lead-in for Corporation Council. So Corporation Council, do you want to go over the uh, item you've been working on? No, just uh, just very briefly, uh, Chief Winslow had identified some of these issues uh, just as the practical matter because there are limitations with uh, what the uh, uh, current system in place with the state's attorney's office, with the criminal uh, side of things. Uh, several uh, cities have looked at uh, different options, but it's kind of an evolving situation because uh, the issues where there are general compliance, but isolated cases of non-compliance, I think that the uh, city can adopt uh, civil penalties. Mm -hmm. That is to complement what the state is doing, because the current state uh, process contemplates only criminal items, uh, whereas I think the city does have the ability uh, to uh, adopt a, uh, a set of fines relating to uh, the pure civil side, which would be on an economic basis uh, uh, only, and uh, 
uh, one example is that the there's going to be a follow-up executive order, I think, tomorrow, really complementing what the state has done vis-a-vis -vis the uh, to try to assist with the uh, police officers' enforcement of both the size of uh, uh, gatherings and then also spacing with with the uh, stores and so on. But that has been a process that's been going on over the last few days vis-a-vis -vis with like Chief Winslow and so on and looking at what other cities are doing. But the next step would be uh, to adopt some kind of a civil penalty that would be in the form of an economic penalty since there's not a clear uh, process on the criminal side. Question. Yeah. Alderman Redpath. So uh, with, with the mayor with the Emergency Powers Act, does he have the authority to initiate those without us, without the city council's approval? Um, we will look at that, and I'll be able to let you know more about that tomorrow. I'm not, Some of the other I'm not fighting it. I think he should do it. If, if, he, if he has the authority, I think he should do it. Uh, I was simply going to say that uh, at least one of the other cities, uh, Alderman McMiniman actually sent me some information about this earlier. Uh, one of the other cities has adopted a specific ordinance relating to uh, the executive enforcing executive order with civil penalties. Mm -hmm. uh, the city of Normal uh, has uh, taken some steps over the last two days in this direction. And so we're looking at those and we'll be uh, uh, providing that information to everybody by tomorrow. Thank you. Mayor, real quick, if you don't Alderman mind. Um, one thing that, and again, it, it concerns me that, that, and I don't know, you know, Aaron, you know, with public health, that they put out this map and we have a situation where people look at that map and they say, oh, I don't have any cases in my area. I don't have anything to worry about. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, and that's a, that's a big, that's part of it. Um, I, I'm concerned if, if, if you th don't think there's compliance now, wait until at the end of the month. If they extend this, people are going to go crazy because people are ready to get back to work. I really believe that. People, you, you wouldn't think so, but they're ready to get back to work. And uh, I think that with it, we got to get better numbers and we got to get some testing down here. And somebody needs to stand up and scream and say, we need testing down here. We need to know what the numbers are. And I just don't think that, that, that uh, you know, I, don't, I just, unless we start screaming about it, I don't think you're going to see us get any tests because they're worried about Chicago. Because yeah, that's where the hot spot is. I don't know if Alderwoman Conley can shed any light on it or check on that through Illinois Department of Public Health. I mean, I, I can say everyone wants more tests. I don't think, I don't think we're alone in that. No. Um, I, I, you, you can go anywhere in this country and I don't think anyone's getting tested enough or the way they want to. Yeah, Chicago's a hot spot right now. Um, I, I think, I think, Mayor, it'd be great if you were consistently saying, you know, hey, we'd like some more tests here and let, let's make some noise about that. I, I agree with that, but realistically, we're drawing from a shallow pond right now. Um, well, I guess the question is, uh, if you and could I check. Say, I, just, I, I, could I, mean, I also the... want to say, you know, we're, we're talking about law enforcement and um, and, I, and again, I, I think there, there is a concern of putting our police officers at risk to enforce things, but there's peer pressure too. And, you know, it's, it's not just kids who are doing, who are going out. I mean, I, I don't even want to tell you how many older people, um, mayor your age, my age, who are out there, we should be influencing them through adult peer pressure. I mean, it, it worked uh -huh. in high school. It doesn't go away. Um, it, <laughs> It doesn't, you know, we should, I mean, and mayor, I, I, I keep reading from people. They're like, Hey, so what's the mayor think about this? What's going on with this? I'm like, I'm not, that's not my job. I'm on my, my Facebook page. I'm trying to talk to people every day. Um, people want to hear from, from all of us, but they'd like to hear from their mayor too. So, um, if we can, any way we can to influence behavior, it's, it's not just tickets. It's not just punitive we can, we're all trying to bring our own peer pressure to this situation and, and influence people to make good decisions. Great. Uh, the question, though, was with regards to Alderman Hanauer is the, uh, why the numbers, if you have a contact at the also, Illinois Department of Public getting, Health is going in and out, uh, with, so regards to the, with regards to the numbers in the areas that aren't covered with the zip code. And so I don't know if there's someone specifically we can talk to. Uh, that'd be I ask, helpful. I'd ask um, Gail at the at the uh, 
County Health Department to look into that and also to look into getting uh, Springfield numbers. So I think that's who can probably expedite getting that information. Good, because I was going to send her an email too. Thanks, Doris. Yeah, I, I uh, asked her last night. Yeah, I believe Chief Reines shared that information or that concern previously. So um, that's, yeah, it's, uh, there's an issue. So if we had someone at the state level, it's my understanding that the test, especially at the hospitals that are from the private sector, they uh, send them through Illinois Department of Public Health and then it funnels back through um, locally. So there's a disconnect somewhere there and that's what we need to get at. Alderman McMinimum. I agree that, that uh, the uniform messaging is important and we need as many people talking about this as, as, as we can and, and, and especially the experts. You know, we've got a unified command in the county and that's a, a good body of experts. We've got all our health officials out there. Um, Mayor, I've heard you on the radio numerous times speaking to the public. We've got the city council meeting right now. But what I'm really impressed by so far is we've got a very large number of senior living uh, situations in the Springfield area, assisted living, nursing homes, skilled care facilities. And what I see is that um, we've got some very good um, activity, um, precautionary and, and uh, care activity going on there. I know the, the one nursing home I uh, visit w went to lockdown three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, they went to lockdown. And uh, they, then they followed that up, no communal eating. The folks in this nursing home, um, they don't go to the dining hall anymore. For three weeks now, they're served in their, in their rooms. And it's tough because they're basically locked in their rooms. And um, this week when I went, you know, all the staff was wearing masks in, in this nursing home. So fortunately, um, Springfield has avoided the situation that Taylorville's in right now. They got, had two big hits in Taylorville. And uh, um, so thank you, you know, everyone that's speaking up and protecting our most vulnerable. And, and we got different categories of vulnerable folks. So um, let's, uh, hopefully we can keep our record positive in the Springfield area. And the one thing I should say is on our Facebook post, I know the uh, last one, uh, we had 13,000 people view it. Uh, so if Alderman could share that as well. Uh, that's always helpful, just like the neighborhood news, which we appreciate. I think um, Alderwoman DeCenso might have had a question. No. Okay. Chief Riney, he had something. No, I, I didn't really have a, that, that was a very early target, obviously, was uh, was that community. And I, I can add to it without saying a whole lot, but the uh, even the Springfield Housing Authority was kind of a, for lack of a better word, kind of an afterthought for the, for the incident management team. You know, what are we doing for them? And when we reached out to them, they had already done a lot. They had already taken steps to, you know, uh, make sure that uh, people were uh, not having visitors, the, the common areas, the washing of the elevators, the same thing that that's been the biggest problem in cities where we stack our people on top of each other, uh, that we wanted to make sure that, uh, uh, and they had, they had received that message loud and clear even really before we reached out. Well, thank you. Yeah, Jackie Newman does a great job. Yeah. The Housing Authority. I agree. So appreciate all your great efforts, Chief. Thanks for the update. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the March 17, 2020 City Council meeting and approve the minutes. So move. Second. Been moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre council first reading of ordinances into the record of the City Council meeting. So moved. Second. second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <coughs> motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda in the record of this city council meeting. I move. Second. Been moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <coughs> motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So move. So move. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The clerk will now read the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. 
Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to remove agenda number 2020-125 in ordinance uh, with regards to the rail project. So move. Second. 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 Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor uh, of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries and this will be read in the regular order. Next item on the agenda is 2020-119, an ordinance approving a professional services agreement with the Energy Authority, Inc., an amount not to exceed $76,000 for the services required to manage the request for proposal process for future capacity and energy needs for the Office of Public Utilities. Motion to amend. Second. Yeah. And moved and second to amend. And what's the amendment? Yeah, Mayor, I'd like to, it's a kind of a four amendment because of all this, but I would like to ask uh, the energy authority shall keep a log on all communication between anyone at the city of Springfield and T regarding this RFP. The log will be presented to Alderman prior to the release of the RFP. And the final RFP will be sent to council coordinator, Tim Griffin, uh, to the Alderman for their review prior to the release. Second. So it's been moved and second to amend uh, the ordinance to for the Energy Authority to keep a log with regards to any correspondence with the city officials prior to the RFP and then issue the finalized log to the um, alderman and uh, uh, council coordinator and the mayor's office as well. Yes. Correct? Thank you. Yes. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. All in favor of the uh, uh, amendment say aye. Mayor. Aye. Oh, sorry, someone had a question. Aaron? I, I'm having some internet um, issues. Um, um, Conley. Motion was to present the report to council. Um, she's breaking up. So if you. Yeah, sorry. Aaron, what this is for is so that number one, I want to make sure that, that this goes out and it's, it's, it, we don't have any biasness or anything like that to where everybody can bid on it. I also, um, I want to make sure that we don't have a lot, any outside, any, any undue influences in this RFP to, to, you know, I want it to be the lowest price, um, the lowest price, uh, energy that we can get for our rate payers. And, uh, I just, I'm afraid that we're going to have some, uh, outside influences come in there. So I wanna make sure that they, they keep a log and that's what it's all about. Okay, and I, and I just to be clear, um, you, you asked that the, that the council get the report prior to it being publicly released, is that correct? Correct. And, and the log, both come before right. us? Right. Okay, thank you, sorry. Any other questions on the amendment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-119 on final passage as amended. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. But moved Second. and seconded. Any discussion on the uh, ordinance as amended? All those in favor of the motion vote yes per the roll call vote by the clerk. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Conley. Aye. Alderman Donnelly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Good night and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 2020-120, an ordinance authorizing payment to the Energy Authority, Inc., and Mid-Continent Independent Systems Operator, Inc., the transmission schedule fees for the fiscal year 2021 in the amount of $4,684,391 for the Office of Public Utilities. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-120 on final passage. So moved. Moved, moved and second. Any discussion? 
Does anybody hear? Uh, Mayor, real quick. The, yes. I, I had asked about, and, and I, I think they, they sent it all. The, mm -hmm. At first, I didn't think the numbers added up. Um, but um, this is just, we have to pay this, this to uh, MISO. So um, I, was, I was good with it. Last week, I had asked for, for response, and they did receive it. I did receive it. So Good. Doug Brown's here. He'll do a quick overview real quick. Thank you. Yeah, just basically the uh, <clears throat> the numbers, the way they were listed in the thing, is kind of hard to follow in the long write-up. But basically, there was a subset of numbers out of that group, um, out of the 4.2 million, that basically was subdivided into to show what the differences were between the Schedule 26 and the Schedule 26A charges were. So right. uh, just sent a follow-up email to the alderman and kind of explained uh, that situation, and I think he cleared it up. Alderman Redpath. So, Doug, now that we're getting ready to uh, phase out 31 and 32, uh, next year these numbers are going to start reducing or go away. Is that correct? No. Uh, these numbers are <clears throat> basically uh, <clears throat> for the, like, basically our, paying our share of transmission costs in MISO. And it's based upon our load, not generation. Okay. And that's due to the improvements to the grid? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doug. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. All opposed, vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Conway. Aye. Alderwoman Conlon. She's saying aye. aye. She's saying aye. You're, mm -hmm. you're on mute. Okay. She's having transmission problems. Aye. Alderwoman Donnelly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 2020-121, an ordinance approving the, and authorizing execution of a lease agreement for 4121 Greenberry Road, Site 95, for the Office of Public Utilities. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-121 on final passage. So move. Is there a second? Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? So, Alderman Redpath. So, Doug, can you? Tell us exactly what what this is going to encompass. Uh, what what offices you're putting in there, please? <clears throat> this is for the green buyer, right? Right. Yeah. This is uh, this is basically for a lease of five acres that has uh, basically a, a mobile home pad on it. Um, so it's just a lease from the, no, the gentleman no, no building no no it's it's uh, just basically for the acreage and the and the and the uh, concrete pad okay. it's his mobile home he's been there for years okay thank you any other discussion all those in favor of the motion vote yes all those opposed vote no the clerk will now call the roll alderman redpath aye alderman gregory aye alderwoman turner aye Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays. Yeah, I vote yes, so, so that gives us 10. 2020 yeah. 125. The um, ordinance authorizing relocation expenses of $218,000 to parcel SR0135, Seidner property located at 709 Barrett Street for segment five of the Springfield Rail Improvement Projects. Committee in place. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-125 on debate or on the final passage. 
And and, and that has uh, that includes the amendment to that, correct, Mayor? Okay. Would be a uh, separate motion for the amendment. Yeah, um, Alderman Gregory is making a motion to amend. Is there a second? second. Correct. The moving second. If Corporation Council would go over the amendment, please. Um, <clears throat> just uh, very briefly, um, the motion was to. I'm sorry. Apologize, sir. That's right. Uh, the, uh, the original motion was to remove it from committee. This is part of the railroad relocation process. Uh, there was a question regarding some prop, some businesses that were, I think, located or co-located with this. The amendment adds a section three, which you should each have a copy of, that just indicates that in the event that the other businesses involved provide the proper documentation, that it would leave open the uh, option of a supplemental payment ordinance being presented to the council, provided that it was qualified. So it's just simply to uh, make clear that uh, this would not be exclusive if there's other proper relocation expenses for the other businesses. That's the effect Correct. of the amendment. Any uh, discussion on that? I don't know if Nate Bottom had anything in addition to add. I don't think he does. All those in favor of the uh, amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. The amendment passes. So is there a motion to uh, on the ordinance as amended? I'm sorry? A motion to approve uh, as amended? A motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve as amended. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderman Turner, Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. <clears throat> Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye, and just point of order is, is uh, Alderman Fulgenzi's vote's been counted. Uh, he's uh, with us. No, she's and, not. And no, uh, I guess not. his voice is not carrying through, but he's, you know, on the video. So he's, oh, he he's with there? us. Yes. Oh, he is on there. Mm -hmm. said I. Yep. Thank you, Alderman McMenamin, for clarifying. And that was an aye for Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Conley. Aye. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Then I, the no nays mayor. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is number 2020-130, an ordinance authorizing execution of an annexation agreement between the City of Springfield, Illinois and Connor Properties, LLC, for property located at 1518 East Stamford Avenue. Chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the City Council and hold a public hearing regarding this annexation agreement. So move. Second. Second. We'll move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. The public hearing is now open. Does anyone wish to address the council regarding this annexation agreement? Has anybody signed up on this matter? Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular meeting of the city council. So move. Aye. We're moving second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say, oppose say nay. Aye. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-130 on final passage. So move. Second. Second. Good move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. All opposed, vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderman Conley. Aye. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten mm. ayes and no nays, Mayor. The Mayor votes aye on the annexation as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 2020-131, an ordinance annexing certain described real property located at 1518 East Stanford Avenue, the chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-131 on final passage. So move. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting or the clerk will read the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. 
Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderman Conley. Aye. Alderman Donnelly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is number 2020-132, an ordinance reappointing Roger W. Holmes as Inspector General for the City of Springfield. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-132 on final passage. So moved with comments later. Been moved, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, discussion, Mr. Yes, Alderman McPenman. Part of our job is to offer advice and, and counsel as, as uh, council members. I note in the most recent contract report that uh, Judge Holmes has a contract to be both the inspector general and it's um, listed not to exceed uh, $25,000. He's also one of our hearing officers at the municipal court for an amount not to exceed $20,000. These um, contracts typically have an out provision where the mayor or the uh, contractor can request to be excused. And mayor, I think it'd be wise to ask um, um, Roger Holmes, um, if, which, which of these contracts you'd like to have so that um, we can spread it for two reasons. We can spread this work out to others. And then secondly, we really want our inspector general to be as independent as possible. And if he has another contract that he um, um, appreciates, um, it may be best not to allow him to think about that he, he likes both contracts. So if you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. in your role as mayor, you could ask him to um, decline one of these contracts if he wishes to. Yeah, we'll have that discussion. I don't know, Corporate Council, if you have anything you'd like to add to that or um, <clears throat> will you follow up with him? No, I mean, we can discuss it. Usually it's a question relating to um, uh, issues of conflict, and he's been, uh, I would just say, uh, very meticulous as it relates to uh, uh, declining to hear cases and that sort of thing, uh, if he feels there's a conflict. Uh, however, we can certainly discuss if uh, that uh, uh, issue with him, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And he, by way of information, uh, he indicated uh, in the last couple of days that he has or in this in the process of completing the last one or two of the uh, uh, duties as it relates to the inspector general cases, he will be at the next council meeting. He could not be tonight, but he will be at the next one to give a report. Alderman Redpath. And this contract is a not to exceed situation, correct? At $25,000, so he may not make that level. Is that correct? That, that is correct. And you may recall that regardless of the amount, Inspector General requires City Council approval specifically under our city code. Right. So that comes forward and would always come forward regardless of who would be Inspector General. That would always come to the Council and that is uh, done. You may recall when all of this happened originally in the first, I think, year uh, of this last term, trying to straighten out the ethics uh, process. Um, it was designed to be a one year, so it would be constantly subject to review. So these are one year at a time, and it requires city council approval for the inspector general to serve as an inspector general year by year. So my in point the event being, there's an issue. My point being is that he is only going to charge us what he's what he's working. I'm, I'm sorry, that is right. correct. It's not to exceed, so it would be whatever it is up to that maximum. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes. Alderman DeCento. Um, Alderman McMenamin, I agree with you. Um, I think we are seeing far too many of the same faces on boards and commissions throughout the city. Um, I know there's an upcoming, um, the new housing board. It, we have some people on there that are on other boards and commissions. And there are a lot of people in this city that really want to be involved and that would love to have a seat at the table. Um, so I, I think that, you know, as a, as a council, we need to be aware of that. And I don't think we need people serving in multiple functions. I think we need to, if 
you know, if he's if Judge Holmes is going to be the inspector general, then he doesn't need to be the you know the admin law judge. It's there's other people out there, and I feel like we re, we recycle a lot of the same people over and over and over. So let's give some other people a chance. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. All opposed, vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. <laughs> Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCenso. No. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Nine ayes and one nay, Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is 2020-133, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Mary Musianti to the Lincoln Library Board of Trustees. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-131 on final passage. So move, second. Okay, move and second, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes, those opposed vote no, the clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCento. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Conley. Aye. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Thin eyes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Chair, will entertain a motion to suspend the rules and place agenda number 2020-144 in ordinance approving the final plat of Gales Minor Subdivision for the Office of Public Works on an emergency passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, discussion? Yeah, Mayor, if I might. Sure, Alderman um, Hanauer. This, this uh, process um, it, this was a minor change in the in the uh, at Piper Glen. They were adding two lots. Uh, one of them is up for um, one, one of them is up for closure here r r rather quickly, and that's the, the reason why I need to, we need to kind of move on this. Um, we need to look at it a little bit was on our side, but then some of it was on their side. But to, for for me. We need to look at this process when you've got a neighborhood and, you know, it just took too long. They had to do some surveying and all that that I don't know if it was necessary, but I think we need to look at our code on some of these things and, and see if we can streamline it because um, we got we to gotta be uh, easier on businesses. It, it just... It, it's just crazy how, how much they had to spend and all the, all the stuff they had to do for two or three lots, so. But I'd appreciate passage on this so that they could meet their meet the closing date. Alderman McMiniman. Alderman Hennaro and I had a, some exchange some uh, um, text messages or emails about this, and I agree with the merits of this um, emergency. I think we, got a, we may have a problem, though, if we didn't um, publish the um, emergency uh, back on uh, and on Friday, we have to give 48 hours notice for emergency passage. So I'm not sure if that took place. I don't see it listed on our agenda today as emergency. So I, I want to help you on this, uh, Alderman Hanauer. I mean, if, if you want to call an emergency meeting, I think that would get it done sooner than if we wait for two weeks. Um, I, that's complicated in everyone's schedule. But I think we got to follow our rules. If something is going to be on emergency passage, it, it's got to be on the agenda 48 hours in advance. Well, the, the, I thought that it was going to be on emergency passage, and, and um, I know, I don't know if Nate's on, but um, we originally, uh, it was my understanding, it was going to go to emergency passage and be on the, um, the, the notification out, you know, on Friday. When I got everything Friday, I didn't get to read it until later, and it did not make it, I, I, I didn't, I just, I caught it 
that it wasn't out, you know, it wasn't on emergency on the agenda. I don't know what the rules are, you know. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to help, help keep a um, closure, you know, closing, um, you know, so that they don't have to wait forever again. I think the uh, Corporation Council will weigh in, but it does list it. Um, unfortunately, I think we, the clerk didn't get posted on the agenda as emergency, but it is posted in the listing of ordinances as emergency, so it's just not in the right position. Is that correct, Corporation Council, if you'd I, like to explain I think the, the, the question that's being asked is, um, can the city council uh, suspend its procedural rules to address this tonight uh, by virtue of a, of a two-thirds vote of the council? The, the separate issue of the 48 hours notice is really relating to the Open Meetings Act. This is published and on the agenda, so it may be taken up provided it's consistent with our rules. It is part of the agenda. It's on the listing of ordinances. Uh, it may not be the uh, most perfect practice. However, I believe the council does have the authority to uh, waive to, uh, under Robert's Rules of Order, under our order procedures that's adopted, to waive application of the rules. I believe it has complied with the Open Meetings Act because it's on the agenda and published. You could not take action on an ordinance that's not on the agenda. That's where we get We've into done some. This before. We've done this before on other uh, other uh, things that were on first reading. I know that. I can't. I, no, I don't have the list of, but we've done it a few times. And, and typically what the mayor's referring to, Alderman, is uh, typically in the ordinance itself, it will refer to emergency passage. The ordinance in this case did not. However, the question is, can we waive those rules? I believe we may properly do so. I think that having it on the agenda, having it published on Friday, uh, allows the council to take action if it chooses to waive the reference to emergency uh, in our individual rules. I'll make a motion that by exception of the rules, we waive the 48-hour requirements if it's the opinion of our city attorney that we have that authority. Second. It's been moved and second to uh, waive that requirement. And second, any discussion? Alderman Repent. No, no, sorry about I, that. No, I was going to make the same motion. Thank oh, you. Sorry. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Both say nay. Does that need a roll call? And then, if you would, a motion then would be to adopt the okay. ordinance. But I'll there move. would have to be a roll call yep. on the ordinance yep. in order to properly uh, Is there a it. second on the ordinance? Second. Second. The move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. All opposed, vote no. The clerk will now read the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. He yes, said. <laughs> Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McKinnon. Aye. Alderwoman Conley. Aye. Alderman Donnelly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 2020-150, an ordinance authorizing the execution of contract accepting RFP, CW 20-28, authorizing a contract with Republic Services, Inc. for landscape waste collection services for a period of one year and an amount not to exceed $970,000 for the Office of Public Works for emergency passage. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-150 on final or an emergency passage. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. All opposed, vote no. The clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderman, Alderwoman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Donnelly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. 
Mr. Mayor? Yes, Alderman Dunlap. Uh, there's been a request by staff to withdraw ordinance 2020-107, actually withdraw it from the agenda and uh, because the develop it's in committee presently, the developers decided to do the project without TIF assistance. Okay. So I'd like to make that motion. Second. Been moved and second to withdraw uh, ordinance number 2020-107 related to a TIF request. I think that was the one for downtown. Is that the one? That's correct. And second, any discussion? All Alderman those... Donlan. Yes, yes, go ahead. Um, is it your understanding that they do intend to go forward with the project though? That's what I was told by staff via text. Okay, good. That's the one they, where they keep putting on Monroe, but it's it's actually Adams. Is that correct? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, I'll read it into the record, please. It says 2020-107, uh, an ordinance authorizing execution of a redevelopment agreement with PK Downtown Springfield LLC for financial assistance for the property located at 510 East Monroe Street, utilizing central area tax increment finance funds through the Office of Planning and Economic Development for an amount not to exceed $20,000. But I thought that was supposed to be on Adam. Am I wrong there? No. It's, it's been on. Right. It's supposed to be Adam. It's Adam. You're right, because that's Security Bank or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. It doesn't matter. He wants it pulled. Yeah. Yep. Point of order. <laughs> Alderman Redpath. Do we need to change this, or is it is it right on the other whatever the electronic side. Being withdrawn. Oh, it's being withdrawn. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jim. Withdrawn. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't hear that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is 2020 151. An ordinance authorizing contract number PW20-21 with Evans Cartage for landscape disposal services, which includes branches and limited yard waste services for an amount not to exceed $780,000 from April 1st, 2020 through March 31st, 2021 for the Office of Public Works for Emergency Passage. So move. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting or the clerk will now call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Solgenzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman Defenso. Aye. Alderman McMiniman. Aye. Alderman Conley. Aye. Alderman Do Alderman Donnelly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten eyes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Is there any unfinished business come before the City Council? I have a question. Alderman Turner. Um. So. I know that these are extraordinary circumstances right now, but is there any way that any other method that we can receive the um, ordinances other than by email? And the reason why I ask, and this may not affect anybody else, and if it doesn't, then that's fine, but the attachment that we received on Friday for the ordinances was almost 200 pages. And if that's kind of taxing on people that have just, you know, home HP printers. So is there any other way that we can get that information? Yeah, we will try to have a package upon request and send those out. That'd yeah. be great. Thank you. Yep. You're so accommodating, We're Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put Tim Griffin to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, no. Tim. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, do our best to do that. Oh, I see. Well, we'll drop it off to your house. How's that? That's even better. <laughs> Leave it in my mailbox. <laughs> Any other unfinished business? 
The uh, any new business come before the council? I do have two items, uh, and again, this information is one's on the uh, website, springfield.il.us. Under the economic development page, um, the payment protection program that was rolled out by the SBA, that was a uh, business assistance uh, for entities that are keeping their employees uh, through this tough time, and it helps cover the costs of payroll and operations. And so. Um, I know our community banks, uh, they've been busy, extremely busy, because it just rolled out last Friday and taking those applications. So we'd encourage anybody to go to their local lender and inquire about that program, because that's one that you apply through your bank, and then they help work the logistics through the SBA. The other one for individuals that need immediate help is the emergency um, impact. Oh, there we go. Impact Disaster Loan Program, where you can get uh, $10,000 uh, more expeditiously. That one, I believe, is right through the S uh, SBA, and uh, that's for those emergency needs uh, immediately. And that, again, that information is on the city's website. The other Aaron, item, um, Aaron, that uh, that in the one, the second one that you talked to talked about, I I found out today because uh, my wife applied for it. Uh, it's it takes a little bit long. It takes about three weeks to four weeks for it to get implemented. So either way, the SBA's flooded, and uh, just like um, unemployment um, site is flooded, and so a lot of people aren't getting getting any money up front right away. It's gonna they'll get it back back pay, I guess. But right now, people are struggling. I know that so. Yeah, on the, uh, that payment protection program, they should check with their lender and see uh, what their options are there as well. Any other discussion on that? The other item I did send an email with regards, we did get a request uh, from the uh, food bank and it's the distribution of food. If you look what's happening across the country uh, with the unemployment, uh, which Alderman Hanauer uh, you know, or the struggles have uh, alluded to, uh, that's put a additional burden on our food pantries and the availability of food. And so, um, you know, what we're trying to do, at the food bank has a need for financial uh, with regards to taking that look out. If we do hit the peak within the next several weeks, uh, you need to be looking out ahead of that to see what are the food needs. And so they did put in a request and, uh, I did make the commitment of $100,000. I asked Capital Township to uh, match funds associated with that. And I did have a conversation with uh, Congressman Davis actually today. Mm -hmm. And he did verify the uh, funds that uh, were awarded um, through his efforts of, I think it's nearly $800,000. Those uh, could be used towards that initiative. So I don't know if, uh, Chief, if you want to say anything else to that effect or. But again, this is uh, will help uh, obtain, you know, place the food order because it does take, I think, four to six weeks or two to four. I think it's no, four to right. six weeks. She, I can't she remember. Said, she said they were four weeks out. And if you want to go over some of the logistics associated with that, yeah, uh, uh, you know, I, I I put this in the email the other day to the uh, to the council, but you know, they're the hub for the delivery mechanism for our food plan. They are the ones that did it already, so we didn't have to reinvent the wheel, but obviously there's other pantries, there's other uh, uh, food services out there. So for the, one of our biggest concerns wasn't, wasn't really as much for people that were already in that program, already on that program, because they were already receiving that assistance, but we really wanted to identify those people that maybe were the working poor that are now displaced and need that temporary help. Uh, that one or two uh, outreach uh, from uh, from a food bank, and again, when they're when they're looking three and four weeks out, um, that's um, that's how they have to they have to project. They really have they really need a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. They don't have it, but this is uh, the the best thing we can do is just to try to help them succeed. Thank oh. you, uh, Mayor. Since okay. we're talking about um, assistance. The CBDG funds, are there, have we set the parameters by which that money will be um, available to the community? I, I mean, I know that there are a lot of programs for uh, small businesses, and I think that that's great because 
um, you know, they are the energy for our community. But in the midst of all of this, we really do need to also think about um, those low income, vulnerable uh, citizens. You know, uh, when people are already living on the brink of poverty, you throw in situations like this and it just exacerbates those situations. Yeah, we did have a uh, conversation with our uh, consolidated plan with regards to that, uh, the plan we put in place to submit to HUD, so we're doing a rewrite. And in those discussions, um, they are taking into consideration COVID parameters, uh, individuals or businesses impacted by the coronavirus. And so uh, we are rewriting it for that purpose. And uh, they are going to change the rules uh, or guidelines uh, associated with that so you can um, have uh, additional support uh, with regards to the coronavirus and those being impacted. Uh, there's still, HUD's still working on the guidelines for that, but that's something that will be uh, coming out hopefully uh, within the next couple months. So Mayor, will this be really- Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, no, I mean the, so you say in the next couple of months. So the, the, 800,000 that that's coming to the city. That's the money that I'm talking about. Oh, that. Yeah, that's uh, we can so we check won't be able right. to expend any of that money for a couple of months. No, when we receive it, there's a uh, we'll have to check on as far as that how that would flow or just dis be distrib distributed. Uh, the COVID part, the impacted part, that's the uh, that's what they're taking a look at is what are the um, changes associated with that. So um, in writing the plan, that's what the changes would be. But as far as uh, what the requirements are available right now um, that are COVID related, we'd have to have that conversation with HUD uh, with that. The reason the food bank qualifies is because they're already in that uh, realm normally associated with the uh, CDBG and offering that assistance. So, it, so if, if, I guess my concern is, if this is part of the emergency stimulus package, and we're talking about people that are in need now, if we're, talk, if we're looking two months out in order to provide some assistance, it will be almost, you know, non-consequential at that time. So is that something that we need to be talking to our, um, Congressional delegation about. Uh, I mean, I'd be willing to to do that to intercede on on um, on our behalf in that regard. Yeah, we have those discussions. We'll because we I just will need, uh, I just think that it's it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, well, it just doesn't make any get... sense to me that in a federal stimulus package we will be talking about we can't roll any of that funding out to uh, impacted individuals for two months. So I, I so I don't know. Do we need to talk to our Delegation. Well, I guess it's twofold. One is, what's the need right now? If it's food related, you know, we've addressed that. If it's something else uh, with rent subsidies, uh, we do have CDBG funds right now. Can we use it for that? And if it doesn't qualify uh, through HUD, we'd have to get permission uh, saying that it is COVID related. And will okay. that qualify? So that's okay. the dynamic that we have to work within. Uh, but it just depends on what the immediate request would be. Um, associated with it, and does it qualify for CDBG funds right now? We could do it right now. And if it doesn't, then we have to um, ask HUD uh, and have that conversation with, here's what the need is right now. Uh, can we use those funds? Okay, so if we're talking about, say, for instance, rental assistance, do we have some parameters in place that would um, deal with providing rental assistance? Well, that's one thing uh, Alderman Gregory asked about today and that we're checking on. Mayor. Uh, okay, so. But we'll check on that and uh, see what the answer is. But we'd like to get it in writing from HUD just uh, to protect ourselves. So we have to check. We ha so we have to check with HUD on it. Right, and uh, again, I'm not sure if CDBG funds. Maybe Corporation Council can answer this. I'm not sure if CDBG funds can be used for rental assistance. I know they can be used for purchasing a home, down payment assistance, but as far as rental assistance, I'm not sure. Uh, with okay, see that, to that. That's so why that's I'm what saying we have to it, find it, out. We need to be reaching out to our congressional delegation to to get to if if in fact 
the, the emergency stimulus funding cannot be used for that on the local level. We need to, I know that they're working on some supplemental legislation. We need to, we need to let them know that that is a, um, a crack that we need to close if, mm -hmm. if in fact that, that's not the case. And that's one that we probably could work uh, with the Housing Authority on as well, because I know they provide that type of assistance. But I think you're referring to individuals that are right now renting, and there's a, you know, nobody, uh, there's a, um, it's prohibited to evict anybody right now. You cannot evict anybody. Uh, so that is in place for protection. So it's a matter of after this is over, they need assistance, but maybe they're unemployed or whatever. Those are the parameters we'd have to set up. Yeah, Mayor, I'm hearing from landlords that, I mean, obviously they don't they don't want to evict people right now, but they have bills to pay too, and, and renter assistance, I, I think we'd kind of, I think there was sort of an understanding that that was part of this package. So um, if we could pass, I appreciate Alderman Turner offering to step up and reach out because this is a big deal. A lot of our a lot of our housing in Springfield is rental property. Um, and and we're we're putting a lot of people at risk if you know there there's an under, there's, there's a understanding that this is going to be available and then it turns out it's not so um, yeah actually I applaud it was uh, my Governor understanding that that was part of the emergency stimulus package yeah. was rental assistance was included <laughs> that's what I had understood and, too and, and Alderman Mc, McConley uh, raises a good point even though. Even though we can't evict people, we, we don't know how long this is going to drag out. And the minute that people can be, can start evicting, that's that's you know it's going to be late to put people in the queue for assistance. And if you have an individual that has multiple uh, rental properties, they they still have bills that they have to pay and. Yeah. If there's uh, repairs and things that need to happen on the properties, we have to make sure that they remain inhabitable. So this is, is very critical. Oh, I understand that. That's why we've been, had conversations uh, with Congressman Davis, which we appreciate. Uh, with regards to the other item, which we're not discussing, is mortgages. I mean, people owe mortgages, you know, so we don't know what that situation is. And uh, so that's really what we need to uh, zero in on what's the assistance. But again, what I was going to say, that's why Governor Pritzker's proactive measure with his uh, emergency order, not allowing people to be evicted, gives time, gives time. And that's what you need is let's get time to determine what funds are available, how can we allocate those, and that's what we intend to do. Alderman McMinimum. Um, Fortunately, we've got a variety of uh, assistance that's pre-existing that will continue, whether it be food stamps or public assistance. And then part of that um, um, federal stimulus package includes if you become unemployed, you get, besides the normal, normal formula of benefit, the federal stimulus program allows, gives $600 a week in addition to your normal uh, unemployment insurance. That's uh, 600 times four in a typical month. That's an additional $2,400 of additional aid coming through the federal. And, uh, and, then, and then we've got the um, $1,200 per person um, checks coming from the Treasury Department and then an additional $500 for each child. So we've got a variety of assistance out there and uh, the more the better. And um, uh, thank you, Mayor Langfelder, for reaching out regarding the um, the HUD money and how it can be used that's COVID-related. Mm -hmm. And all those, I think everybody realizes uh, that it's taking time to get those resources, funding resources. So, again, that's why it was important for Governor Pritzker. I think he was ahead of the curve with regards to the disconnections, not only for the uh, rent, uh, but also with regards to utilities. Um, and those were important steps to help protect and it gives us time to get the financial resources flowing that don't come overnight. It will take a month or so, but uh, we'll work through those processes to uh, help as many people as we can. Hey, Mayor, real quick. Um, um, hand hours. So, so the 100,000 that you guys put, that you put towards this, the up to, 
what I guess is that what fund is that coming out of and is it are we going to be reimbursed for that or is that something that we need to that would be the uh, CDBG yeah. funds would be the intent I'm sorry the community development block grant funds okay that's where it's coming out of okay right any other questions or discussions on the stimulus or the care package or anything Thank you very much. And again, anybody interested, they can go to springfield.il.us and we do have that COVID webpage uh, that has links to all the information, whether it's federal, state, or local. The other item of good news that we did receive with, was with regards to a $33 million uh, grant from the ICC, Illinois Commerce Commission, and that's for Madison and Jefferson, uh, the final phase of the uh, rail project associated with the underpasses. and. Uh, we're going to hopefully uh, will leverage those dollars with the federal government, but that was good news uh, to receive. So we appreciate everybody's efforts with regards to that. And we will have Jim Mole come, uh, or he won't come, but he'll give a remote presentation at the next city council meeting on the project, give an update on that. Any other new business? Uh, we did have uh, someone that wanted to address the council. Mary Francis emailed questions to Corporation Council regarding Pillsbury. Is there anything you'd like to cover on that? Um, I think that the questions that she, <clears throat> she had asked were related to whether or not there was an agreement or a, uh, a relationship with the Attorney General's office and the city vis-a-vis -vis the uh, infor code enforcement in connection with their prosecution of the case. The answer is there was an informal agreement or an agreement uh, on jurisdiction. The city would step back and the state would go forward. We're currently reevaluating that. And we've also filed a motion to intervene in the state case. Great. Any questions on that? Is there any other items to bring before the city council? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Is a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Say nay. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, night. guys. Well, thanks, everyone. Stay safe.